हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम टू यू इन योर चैनल फिजिक्स एंड यू टुडे आई एम हियर टू डिस्कस ए न्यू एनिमेटेड वीडियो रिलेटेड टू रूबी लेजर लेट्स स्टार्ट द वीडियो रूबी लेजर रूबी लेजर इज फर्स्टली फेब्रिकेटेड बाय द टी माइम इन नाइनटीन सिक्सटी इन एच आर लेबोरेटरीज रूबी लेजर इज जनरली सॉलिस्टेड लेजर इट इज बेसिकली बेस्ड ऑन दी थ्री लेवल लेजर सिस्टम इट रिक्वायर्ड दी ऑप्टिकल पंपिंग फॉर द एक्साइटेशन ऑफ द क्रोमियम आइन इट प्रोड्यूज डीप रेड कलर वेव लेंथ सिक्स नाइन फोर थ्री एंक्स्ट्रॉन जनरली रूबी लेजर इज ए पल्स लेजर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इन ए रूबी लेजर इज ए क्रिस्टल द रूबी क्रिस्टल इज फेब्रिकेटेड बाय फेब्रिकेटेड ऑफ क्रोमियम डॉप्ट अल्मीनियम ऑक्साइड Where aluminium oxide is behave as a host and chromium ion is going to behave as a active center. If you talk about the dimension, cylindrical crystal is having a length of two to thirty centimeter and diameter point five to two centimeter. The most importantly, if you see, it require it there is a helically xenon lamp for to produce the optical pumping. and most important is the inlet and outlet source for the liquid nitrogen because during the operation large amount of the heat has been produced to keep your system in a eminent condition so we need a flow of liquid nitrogen optical pumping is generally achieved with the help of a xenon lamp the wavelength of 5500 angstrom is sufficient to excite the chromium ion to produce the laser action optical cavity is generally made with the help of the uh, coating uh, done at the end of the crystal one end is partially coated and other end is the fully coated to produce the optical cavity let's start the working of the ruby laser consider we have a ground state e1 number of atom present in a ground state and we have a excited state e3 lifetime of the excited state is 10 to the power minus 8 second optical pumping required for the ruby laser helically xenon lamp flashlight is required for the same essential wavelength required for the mechanism 5500 angstrom so what happen when you switch on the flash or xenon lamp a particular wavelength double 5 double 0 angstrom is get absorbed by the ground state atom they absorb the energy and move toward the excited state means they generally shift from the ground state e1 to excited state e3 so that means atoms are now reach at at energy state e3 but the excited state is unstable for it so what happen that unstable state unstable state make a de excitation of the chromium ions to intermediate state that intermediate state is generally represented by here e2 which is generally known as a metastable state lifetime of that metastable is 10 to minus 3 and technically that transition from e3 to e2 that is non radiative transition and this metastable state is generally abbreviated as long lived state so that means population inversion has been achieved between metastable state and ground state so now what happen here again same process is run in sequence optical pumping was there ground state if there will be a ground state atom they will move towards the higher state but there will be a de excitation from e2 to e1 by initially uh, spontaneous emission that spontaneous emission produces 6943 angstrom wavelength photon that photon again stimulate the atoms present in a metastable state to return back to ground state by emitting a photon 6943 of wavelength thanks for watching the video if you like the video hit on the subscribe button thank you very much have a nice day